Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look into how we can turn the increment primitive into an arbitrary read primitive and we're going to see how we can actually use a K resource manager field known as description field which we've seen before and how we can use that field to build an arbitrary read primitive. Okay, let's get started. You might be familiar with this NT query information resource manager function by now, because we've used it to actually congest the resource manager's mutex when we we're trying to win the race condition. But internally, this function allows us to query the description field of the K resource manager. And so what it does in the kernel is that it retrieves the description Unicode string of the K resource manager object, and then it copies the length byte pointed by the buffer field back to user land. And so it directly looks like an arbitrary read primitive if we can set both the buffer and the length fields of the description field with arbitrary values we want. And so the question is, how do we know the buffer and length fields originally before we increment them with our increment primitive, i.e. how do we know their original values? Remember the chicken and egg problem? Well, it turns out that all we have to do is create a resource manager with an empty description when we actually call the create resource manager and we pass the empty description argument to this function. And then the buffer field will be set to null and the length field will be set to zero. And so by design, we know the original values. So from now on, we can increase them to any value we want using the increment primitive without relying on any read primitive in the first place. And so we can set the buffer to an arbitrary kernel address and also the length to the number of bytes we want to read from that kernel address. And then we can just call NT Query Information Resource Manager to read the data back to user land. And then if we want to read another kernel address and another length, we can just change both the buffer and length fields respectively to the new address and the new length we need because we know the previous values we used previously when we were leaking the previous kernel region. And we can keep repeating that again and again. The only thing we have to be careful is to set the buffer field back to null when we are done with the exploit. And this is to avoid the kernel to actually free the buffer pointer when destroying the resource manager. But again, this is easy to do because we know the latest value we set it to. So we can just set it back to zero using the increment. And so this is the code for the NT query information resource manager function that we can call from userland in order to read the description field field back. And so we can see that all it does after checking the arguments is basically it copies the description field back to user land and it does it by using the mem move copy functions and copying length bytes from the buffer pointer. And so if you try to summarize what the arbitrary read primitive looks like, we basically initially had the recovery thread trapped in the kernel using a fake user land trap enlistment. And so we created the resource manager with an empty description field. And so what we do is we inject several increment enlistments like LWP enlistments. And what each of these LWP enlistments will do is just increment the description buffer field so we reach the kernel address we want. And this series of enlistments will be followed by another trap enlistment. And so now we can just read the description field from userland using the NT query information resource manager function. And later, when we're done with the exploit, we can just re-inject a series of limited write primitive enlistments in order to reset the description buffer field back to null. And then we can escape the loop and when the K resource manager object will be destroyed, nothing bad will happen. 